Yeah, hello everyone. Welcome to the Equip2 HQ. Today we're going to be going over the Keystrack R5 Impactor. My name's Paul Thompson. We'll do a quick flick through now and show you what it's all about. So first off, we'll start at the brains of the machine. This is where it all starts off at the start of the day. Um, obviously you do your pre-checks in the engine bay and then it's into this computer system here with a PCL board. Um, fully enclosed, dust protected, obviously we're all well aware um, of the dust that can be caused from crushing, um, whether it be alluvial, concrete demo, whatever it may be. Um, so a fully enclosed system in here. Um, with the machine, um, key features are obviously with the cordless remote, it's a 10 stage remote. So basically you can run the machine um, from the remote as well. So we've got charging docks in here, so the remote can be charging at all times. Um, and then you also obviously have a little cordless remote driver one there as well. Um, so for us, this is where it all begins. You've got your key locks here as well. So that's a really key safety feature for the keys tracks. Um, having A and B keys under the engine hood, we'll crack into that a little bit later on. Um, so for us, really simple to use, turning the key, control panel comes up, and basically the first step will be is, is the full start up upon sequence. So you can go through and start the machine up in sequence and it all runs itself up at the start of the day. A really cool feature with the keys tracks comes is the remote. Um, basically it's a safety feature. So you can operate all the primary uses of the machine from the excavator or the loader, whatever you're feeding the machine with. Um, key things about it is, is feeder speed. Um, can be adjusted from the cab of your feeding machine. And then also um, things like, um, the easy things like the magnetic raising, uh, raise and lower of the magnet. Um, on the back side, so if you get a snag up, if you're doing concrete demo around the rear bar and that, you can actually raise that magnet from the cab, spit that out and then carry on again. So safety and productivity are enhanced with the remote. So now we're at where all the process of the factory begins. So obviously we're in the main hopper here. As you can see, we've got hydraulically foldable sides on both sides. Um, we actually clad these on a Hardox 450 product over top of the Domex primary steel from factory. And the reason being is, is these do get a hard time and we want them to last that life of the machine. Um, so we come down here. Obviously we have a two piece setup. Um, so it's a static top side with a vibrating plate bottom and then the, you go through to the first uh, screen deck. Um, so what we have here, so Hardox boltable and interchangeable plates on this here as well. So what we have here is the primary which is a lineal feed. So obviously product comes in and lineal moves along and then we come down, um, we'll talk about this shortly, but we'll go into the screen deck or the mesh which is obviously circular motion. So here you'll see um, we're in the double deck pre-screen here for the R5. Um, this is a sort of a standard configuration um, for us, obviously with a punch plate at the top and a lower deck mesh. The R5 has the largest pre-screen double deck in its class. What this enables us to do is obviously bypass a lot of product underneath the rotor. So it stops us obviously clogging up that through for output and tonnage costings on that, obviously going underneath and bypassing it, but also gives us a really good opportunity to create some really good gap products straight through without having to go through the rotor. So here we are obviously at the key component of what is an impact crusher. So for the R5 we're looking at over 5.1 tonne, not including the blow bar or bearing weights for the rotor. As we all know with an impact crusher, that weight of that rotor in the spinning cycle is what creates the inertia and obviously the impact zone. So obviously the higher the weight you've got and the speed within your rotor to spin round, the less slowages and stoppages, the more product that you'll get through your chamber. So here we are, we're actually standing inside the chamber now. Um, Beauty of this is so much room around to work in here. You've obviously got a lot of wear plates that do need changing in the course of the lifetime of the machine. Um, up on the other side there, we've got, we've got the diverter bars, and they're going to kick in stuff as it comes through the feed to stop the wear on the outside of the wears. For these blow bars, really easy to change out. So as you can see, we've got plenty of room to work away in here. Um, so our techs can show you how to whip those out and change them within an hour and a half. So obviously, less downtime, more product going out the other end. And here we are obviously on the other side of the impact zone, so coming off the top of our, of our special design rotor and we're flying through into our aprons. Okay, so this is where all the impact happens, a lot of bouncing around the stones. As you can see, a lot of wear plates all through here, really easy changeable. So you know, as you can see, I'm sitting in here now, um, piece of cake to do, obviously less downtime, which is what we're all about. The more time you've got this thing humming, the more rocks you've got going out the other end. 
And here we have a chain and match system, obviously in through the feeder side of it, preventing material going firing back out through the feed and up into that area. We don't want that happening, so really important you keep these chains maintained. Um, if you go onto our website with our how-to videos, there's all sorts of little key things that they can go through on there around different wear plates, how the chambers work, the shape of the rotors, everything. So I really advise you to go and have a nose at our website, how-to videos. So here we have the final piece of the puzzle of our double deck pre-screen. Um, so what we can do in here is obviously this belt is reversible. So we can either bring the product back down through the pre-screen and fire it out through the side belt or we can reverse it and go straight down through underneath the rotor, bypassing the chamber altogether. So here we have, um, we've got our after screen, a double deck after screen. We've actually got it in the down position now, just so we can sort of go over it. As you can see, really large surface area, gives us really good productivity for this side of it, um, for coming out with our finer products. The great feature we have about the R5 is, is we can do our 0 to 40 fines, find them out through the end belt. Also obviously with the double deck screen, we can come through here and do a 40mm ballast out through the side as an example, or a 40 to 60. And then also we can fold out the oversized chute and rather than returning that back into the initial hopper, we can fire that outside for an oversized product as well. Awesome little feature about the R5 obviously is the service free bearings at the tail ends and also at the head ends. So both ends of the belts, service free. Awesome little feature. So we're standing here, um, obviously at the magnet belt. As we've been over, this can obviously be raised from the remote. So if you get a block up um, or bird's nest in there, which is commonly prone obviously with rebar, etc., from the demo industry, you can raise that up. Another really cool thing um, about this is obviously the steel properties underneath this magnet are uh, stainless. So what that does is obviously with a magnet and the lifetime of the magnet circulating, if you have properties that it tends to stick to, um, you'll lose the lifetime of your magnets and you'll need to replace them. Obviously having the stainless steel under there, it's not always pulling onto the frame, so just firing material at the side. So here we can see, we looked in from the other side before, but here we have our scalping belt that comes out the side. And as you can see, really good height exit of material, so you can get a really decent stack pull under there without any movements from other machines to move away the product that you've made. So here we're standing up on the, I guess it's on the money side of the machine where the motor is. Um, but just want to point out here, obviously this is our closed size settings for our aprons. So our primary and secondary apron are both hydraulically operated for the closed size settings. So as you can see, we've got these large cylinders here. Um, they will obviously go through along with this torque side there for the closed size settings of our aprons, primary and secondary. Here we are within the engine compartment. As you can see, really easy access. Um, the old Volvo donkey in there, she hums along, mate, and makes this thing go. Um, really fuel efficient, which is a really big part of keeping your cost per tonne down. So here we are on the drive side of the motor. So here we have a cool feature for the key tracks being the variable displacement pump. And what that does is it spreads the load, obviously being really fuel efficient. Here we have the fluid coupling. And what that does is it actually allows an amount of slip to reduce shock load into the motor. So the fluid coupling has a direct drive through to the impactor. As you can see, we've just been able to tilt the machine right up using these patented cylinders here, part of the key track design. Um, key things that that will do for you is there's three main ones. Is one is, is a vibrating discharge feeder here, really easy access in through into that, into the internals of the machine. Um, another cool thing they're good or used for is, is you can tilt or slightly tilt the chassis of the machine um, for your production needs. So it just changes the angle and shape of how the machine runs. And then also um, another cool thing that's really handy for is loading and unloading the machine off your transporter. Obviously it gives you a pretty good degree of angle change when you're driving it along up onto the transporter there. So thanks for your time today and going over a small but brief video. Hopefully it'll give you a fairly good overview of the R5. Um, at it, Equip2, we really believe it's all the 1% as they add up to business success and profit per tonne out the other end. Um, we could go into a lot more detail, don't want to bore you. Um, if you want to go into it, um, if you want to view a machine and work, if you want to come to HQ, please just let us know. Always happy to arrange viewings of machines in the field and also really like having people come through our facilities here at Equip2. 
So that's all on the R5 for now. To go in depth, we've got our how-to videos on our website as well. If not, more than happy to hear from you.